Yo, yo, what's up? It's your boy, Jay Mendez. I am uh, here in front of my building. Just uh, walked around the neighborhood for a little bit because that's what I do to clear my mind and everything. Um, so in three days, I had to count that one. It's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. In three days, I have an event at the Queen's Theater called NYC Fight TV Presents The Takeover. Now, the reason why I gave it that name is because it's not because I'm taking over New York City and everything, but I think there's a, it's a kind of a shift happening in the combat sports in New York where I put uh, two events together already. This will be the third one of the year, the third and final of the year. And, uh, you know, the show has grown... Um, a lot it has grown a lot and I'm grateful because this year you know I've dealt with a lot of different emotions a lot of different um, predicaments and uh, you know and situations and all in all it's been a roller coaster but it's been a great fucking year you know you know I uh, I caught COVID I got sick bad um, I gained a, quite a bit of weight back, but, you know, I don't, I don't mean nothing. The COVID got me so weak that I couldn't, I, I, like, for a few months, I couldn't even work out. So I just, like, you know, piled on some weight, which is all good because I'm still a poppy chulo, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but then, as I'm starting to get back on my grind, I'm starting to get back into the gym, I'm starting to train, I'm starting to feel a little better. Uh, but I also dealt with some good things, like... Um, the, the brand NYC Fight TV has established itself as a respectable brand in New York. Um, and all this happened because I was determined to get out of the, the rut that I was in from last year. You see, last year, the second half of the year, I dealt with a lot of bullshit, a lot of fake-ass people. Fake people who try to run me to the ground. Uh, you know, a fake ex who turned out to be the complete opposite of what she, what she proclaimed to be. A so-called empath, um, uh, fake friends who um, were kind of against me from the beginning, but when the time was right to to really, uh, you know, you know, push that switch to really show who they were, they did, and everything like that. And so, you know, I developed a lot of anger, even more anger than I <laughs> I'm used to, um, but. The main thing I wanted to do when I got back into New York is that I wanted to, when I first came back to New York from last year, I wanted to do start doing fights again. And I reestablished some championship fights and everything last year with other promotions. But then this year, I hooked up with uh, Anthony Andriosi and my cousin Jay. And we came together to put together this promotion. Now, NYC Fight TV has been running since 2015, but it's been running as a kind of a news outlet stuff like that for uh for the fight promotions and the fighters that they wanted recognition they can get it but it wasn't a fight promotion so um we came together we put together the first show which is at the queen's elks lodge and it turned out to be a success now a lot of things fell through and a lot of things had we had a lot of hiccups but we came together, we put it together, and against all odds, we managed to make it a successful event. And there were two other events going on that day, and we were the ones that were talked about. And came the second event, ran much smoother, the second one, had more fights. Um, all the fights were action-packed, nobody got seriously injured. Um, that was a major success. And this one, um, I'm thinking, is going to be an even bigger success. So we've gotten more tickets out there, more coverage. Uh, more people and, 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 and fight camps are excited. And, and the whole thing is because I focused on a purpose. You know, when you get out of a toxic situation, ship, the first thing people want to go to is to try to alleviate the pain. So they focus on momentary pleasures. And I used to do that a lot. Uh, when me and the infamous and legendary Carla Fagan... <laughs> Split. I uh, I started going out dancing, but then I started hooking up with uh, a lot of different women and all, and, and that was unhealthy. 
And at the time that it, I was doing it, it felt good, you know. It, getting off doesn't feel bad, but, you know, th but then you start to think to yourself, in the few seconds that it takes to get off, then you have the, the shame afterwards and the guilt and the feeling that you're just doing it to put a Band-Aid on a wound. And that's exactly what I was doing. So this year, and this time around, when me and this situation ship split up, I focused on my purpose. Um, I had to go through the withdrawal phase, and I had to go through the, you know, the points in which I was angry and lashed back out and went back and forth with these nobodies, which, you know, I guess in hindsight, you know, probably wasn't the best idea, but it didn't hurt me as far as um, the long term, you know. I still don't advise you to do that. I don't advise you to go back and forth with, uh, you know, whoever, whatever toxic ex you have and everything like that because it just creates problems. But that's neither here nor there. We saw what I, that was all about. But what I focused on was my purpose, and the purpose was to become a viable and respected fight promoter in New York City. And I did that. And this weekend, uh, it comes, you know, almost full circle from last year to you know now we're at the Queens Theater which is a, a, a big venue a beautiful world-class venue um, with tons of parking uh, we have you know a ton of championship fights we have a lot of matches um, a lot of people are coming um, we're sanctioned by the International Sport Karate Association which is one of the largest sanctioning bodies for karate and kickboxing and MMA in the world um, I'm truly blessed because we killed ourselves. Like, this week was not easy for me. Yeah, I just purchased the insurance for the fighters. Um, had to square away the doctors, get the ambulance, get all... And all in all, this event cost about 18 grand to put together. But nothing was going to stop me. Nothing was going to stop me. And I made a promise to my cousin who came in with me, and he, he, he was the money guy who came in and said, I believe in you. I made a promise to him that I was going to go forward with this and that I was going to be 100%. And that's exactly what I did. I did that shit. You know? And I, for the people out there who don't know, I am like, had like really, really severe ADHD. And when I mean ADHD, I don't mean like it's just a term that I'm like I'm diagnosed ADHD. So it's hard for me to, to sometimes concentrate on things. A lot of times it's hard for me to concentrate on things. And a lot of times I forget things. And a lot of times I get frustrated. And then the rage comes out. And then I get depressed. And then I, all these different emotions. And then, you know. So I, I, the second event. And, and this is the reason why I mentioned the ADHD part. Is the second event. People were coming up to me and telling me that was the most organized event I've been to. And a person like me with ADHD who lacks organization skills. I'm the one who organized it. And that was one of the biggest compliments I've ever gotten in my life. Because I've put events together where people are like, those fights were so badass and everything. And, you know, as a matchmaker, you just know what fights to put together. So this is natural. Every time I put an event together, they're always telling me, man, those fights were amazing. But this time, they were telling me the fights were good and everything. But it was one of the most smooth and well-run events that I've ever been a part of. And that shit hit me in my heart. That felt good. That felt like I, against all odds, and everything that I go through internally, and 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 all and all that, and my pretty much lack of organization, I put together one of the most organized events in New York City, and that feels fucking great. And I made it a priority to put something like that together to make sure that I was going to be organized. You know, I needed some help along the way. Um, I put together some spreadsheets that, I mean, like, no bullshit. It took me weeks to put these together because when I start a project, it takes me a long time to finish them because I just, you know, my brain goes all over the place. I'm a scatterbrain. But I put these um, spreadsheets together and everything, and they kept me organized. I would go to them to make sure the fighters had all their medicals and their blood work. I would go to them to make sure what the schedule was, the itinerary and everything. And, uh, and I was able to put together something that was respectable and everybody appreciated. And now where people are coming to me and my partners to be part of these events. And um, it's a major compliment to the hard work and dedication that, that we had to put this together. And I'm proud of myself because my purpose was to become a big fight promoter in New York. And this weekend will show the culmination of all that hard work and, and you know, 
dedication and everything and to everybody out there who has supported the movement, whether you support J.C. Desmond, J. Mendez Motivations, NYC Fight TV, Love Over Narcissism, all that stuff. Um, you know, thank you to everybody. Thank you to everybody because you guys keep me in line. You guys keep me motivated. And there's times where I lack motivation and there's times where I just don't want to get up and do things. But when you have a purpose, your purpose should be stronger than that lack of motivation. When you have purpose, eventually it builds that motivation. Your purpose is to do something, you go out and do it. You know, There's gonna be times you lack that motivation, but a world champion, say a boxing world champion, is not motivated every day. But their purpose is to win and defend that championship, so they have to do it. So eventually, as they keep doing it and they continue to be consistent, that motivation will come back. So to everybody out there, I tell you all, you know, when you get out of these situations with these toxic people, don't seek pleasures. Seek, uh, seek purpose. Because your purpose is, uh, is important and will also build your legacy in life. It'll build your confidence. It'll build you back up. And the, you know, don't worry about, you know, the past is supposed to teach you a lesson. And the lesson that I learned was to stop taking care of everybody. The lesson I learned was to stop, you know, trying to fix broken people. Stop trying to take care. Like, la like the last situation ship I was in had three kids. Damn near wanted me to play daddy role. And uh, that wasn't my role. I played the role. I realized coming back, like, screw that shit. That's not my role. You know what I mean? Like... My role it was supposed to take care of me first. And when I have enough in my bag, I can take care of everybody else that I need to. You know? Um, like what last year taught me was to keep focusing on my purpose first rather than focusing on trying to fix other people. Because the people that I tried to fix are broken forever. They're never going to be fixed. That was my fault. I should have I noticed that with the red flags, but I wanted to look past the red flags because, again... I was seeking something to fix the wound from the previous situation ship. And now that I have been single for a year and I've been focusing on myself, um, things are different. Life feels much more purposeful. Like I have a purpose and I feel good and I don't feel the need to have to explain myself to no fucking body, not a fucking soul. I don't owe anybody shit. You know, I could go out and dance with whoever the hell I want to dance with. I could go out and meet whatever woman I want to meet. I could go out and hang out with whoever I can, whoever I want to hang out with. That's my boys and everything like that. I could do conduct my business and everything. And when you are, when you're in a place where it, it feels good being single, right? And I'm single by choice, by choice, because last year, I guess. I tried to force love, but it did work out. Now that I'm single and I'm actually mingling and I'm meeting people and everything, it's like, wow, you know, I, I'm doing the things that I wanted. You fall in love with being alone for a while. After a while, you just start getting used to it and it starts becoming comfortable. And, and when you start achieving things while you're alone, you don't want nobody getting in the way of that shit. I'm telling you right now, you know. I don't want nobody getting in the way of that shit. And I've been on dates here and there, and I've gone out with a couple of women here and there and everything like that, and most of them have actually turned out to be friends. But when you are in a place where you're like, I'm doing good, I'm comfortable, I'm much happier, you know, life isn't peachy all the time. I'm trying to, I'm, let, me, let me make that clear, because I don't want everybody thinking, oh my God, Jay's made it, he's... He's healed. He's so much happier. Yes, I feel like I've healed because I've, but you know, life is life. So, you know, happiness is not 24 seven. You know what I'm saying? And people got this misconception that they're trying to seek happiness and happy. Happiness is an emotion. It's like sadness. It's an emotion. You want to seek peace. You want to seek purpose, purpose and peace. When you have your peace, you're in a good place. So you have the capacity to go out and be happy all the time. You have the capacity to be grateful. But when you're not at peace, you're always at war internally. How can you possibly have any chance of being happy? No. And when you have purpose, you have 
like a, a legacy that you're building and you have your calling in life. I'm rambling, so I just want you all to know that uh, this weekend is going to be a kick-ass show and I'm so fucking grateful. I know I posted a, a thing on the community board that I cuss a lot. You know, I apologize to people if they feel offended by it. Just know I'm from New York, I'm from Brooklyn, and, and I've always kind of spoken with passion about things. Um, so when I say something and I cuss, you know, it's not meant to hurt anybody's feelings or, or piss anybody off. But at the same time, I, 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 you know, I'm just very passionate and very, um, you know, into what I do. I'm very passionate about helping people. I don't do one-on-ones. Um, so I'm just here to motivate people. And if I can get out of the shitstorm that I got into, get back into my purpose and become one of the biggest fucking promoters in New York, then you can do whatever the fuck you want to do and be dope at it and be absolutely amazing at it. You have it in you. Seek out your purpose. Work at it. Become a fucking boss. Become a monster. Become a beast. And at the same time, practice being kind to people. Practice empathy. Practice self-love. You know? I had a lot of anger and hatred in my heart. And I've worked on that over the past year and change. And, you know, there's things in me that, you know, like, I, I, I still get the feelings in me when I, when I know things about to pop off and I get angry and sometimes I see red. But I've worked on curbing that behavior. I've worked on behaving myself and, and seeing things a little bit more logically and saying, is it worth reacting? Nah, uh, it's just better to just breathe it out and keep it moving. Because at the end of the day, I know myself. I know I'm not no chump, so I don't have to prove it to anybody. You know what I mean? My purpose is more important than, uh, than anything, anything else right now. That being said, remember, always love and respect yourself. Thank you to everybody who's always supported the channel. I love you all. May God bless you. Keep God in your heart. And uh, and all things will, uh, will happen the way it's supposed to. All right? Love you all. God bless.